In this lecture, we will study class F power amplifier. Since uh, power amplifier of uh, class F, they come into various uh, version. So this is uh, going to be a two lecture series. So today we are going to uh, talk about the first part. And in this first part, uh, we will consider the simplest uh, class F uh, amplifier, which is also called uh, class F3. And we will see that why it is called uh, F3. But before we go into class uh, F, we will uh, revisit class V and then try to uh, see that how experimentally the idea of uh, class F came. This is uh, class B power amplifier. And uh, in this uh, amplifier, it was uh, found that uh, if uh, a parallel LC is inserted here, then uh, the voltage waveform, the drain voltage waveform becomes more flat. And it was also found that efficiency increases. So for class B, we have uh, already seen that the drain current and voltage, uh, they are going to be of following form. So this is going to be the uh, drain current and the uh, drain voltage is going to oscillate or vary about VDD like this. And for uh, maximum efficiency of class B, we found that uh, the drain voltage swing should be equal to VDD. And uh, why this was able to give uh, more efficiency was that uh, now if you see the product of uh, this voltage and the current, drain voltage and current, then uh, this has zero value at this zero location. And uh, of course, zero for the uh, second half because current itself is zero. So product of voltage and current uh, is going to be Zero. So this is the power dissipated in the MOS. And the average value uh, can be found out. So the basic idea of uh, increasing the efficiency was to ensure that the uh, product of uh, drain voltage and the drain current is uh, minimum. And uh, this was achieved uh, equal to zero for the ideal switch case, which was the class D. But uh, in uh, class F amplifier, we uh, try to do this uh, minimization by making this drain voltage more flat. So here, uh, for this case, uh, we found that uh, impedance looking towards the load is equal to RL at uh, the operating frequency omega and uh, uh, approximately equal to zero uh, for uh, all the higher order harmonics. That is uh, N is equal to uh, two, four, because this uh, drain current, uh, it contains uh, all the even higher order harmonics. So now we will see uh, class F. So uh, as I pointed out, uh, this is the experimental observation that when uh, a parallel LC is inserted here, then it was found that the drain voltage becomes more flat and uh, efficiency increases. So we will try to uh, offer explanation that why this happens. So first we will see the class F3 uh, circuit. So this looks quite similar to class B case, except that now we have this uh, parallel LC in series with the load network. So here we have L and C. So we will calling it L1C1 to designate that uh, they originate at the fundamental frequency. 
the operating frequency. So in this case, so we try to keep this uh, input larger than that of the, the class B keys. So we are going to uh, discuss the uh, class F, uh, assuming that it is modification of class B, but then uh, uh, we arrive at this class F uh, operation, class F3 operation, even if uh, we have uh, this circuit operated uh, in class C or class AB also. That means uh, when the uh, conduction angle is close to 180 degree or more than it or uh, less than it also. So we are going to consider the class B case modification so that uh, we can use the uh, expression for the drain current of this uh, class B to find out the efficiency and uh, power delivered to the load. So experimentally, if it is found that this uh, A is sufficiently large, larger than the typical class B case, then uh, we have uh, this kind of waveform. So the current waveform uh, remains that of the class B case. However, the drain voltage waveform undergoes uh, slight modification. So here what is found is that this waveform no longer remains pure sinusoid, it becomes slightly flat at the extreme of this swing. So since it has become more flat, so here over this portion, the product of VD and ID is going to be a zero for longer duration. So now, if you plot the power curve, so it is going to be more close to zero, like this. So definitely the power dissipation in the MOS is uh, going to be low now, and uh, one can uh, expect uh, higher efficiency. And in fact, that is what uh, turns out. So it is uh, uh, noted that uh, VD is now more flat and uh, that uh, we will see leads to higher efficiency. And fortunately, uh, it leads to more power to the load also. So this uh, higher efficiency we were able to achieve using uh, class C by reducing the conduction angle uh, further and further. Is minus five, which is for uh, pi for class B. This case, pi by two. So, but here uh, we see that the power to the load that also increases. So this is the advantage of uh, this uh, class F three. And uh, here, how do we choose this uh, L three and C three? So what we try to do is that the admittance of uh, that network, which is uh, G omega C3 minus G omega L3 is made equal to zero at, uh, let us say operating fre at frequency omega three, and this omega three is going to be three times of the operating frequency, the fundamental frequency. <clears throat> So since Y3 is zero, this implies that the impedance is uh, going to be infinite. And this will happen at uh, frequency three times the operating frequency. So now if we uh, write the input impedance looking towards the load, then for class F3, what we have is uh, we have the usual load at frequency omega. So why we get this uh, impedance equal to RL at uh, omega is that uh, 
at omega, this uh, CB is going to be uh, short circuited. This CT is also going to offer very less impedance. And uh, this parallel LC, this is uh, going to offer infinite impedance. So what you will see looking uh, towards the load is only this RL. Of course, this is an approximation, gross approximation. This uh, uh, CB, L3, C3, and L1, C1, they indeed in general will offer certain uh, impedance. But approximately, this is going to be equal to RL at uh, omega. Now, what will happen is that at uh, 3 omega, we have seen that the, uh, the parallel L3, C3 has infinite impedance. So looking towards load, what we will see is infinite impedance at uh, 3 omega. And for the all the other higher uh, harmonic currents uh, of this uh, ID, which is going to be 2 omega, 4 omega, and so on and so forth, what will happen is uh, that the uh, CB, C3, they, and C1, they will offer the least impedance path. So the impedance is uh, going to be very low and we will uh, approximate it by zero. So this is for all other harmonics. Uh, we'll call it omega simply. So this is the impedance behavior of uh, this load network now in this case. So Okay, so now the uh, question comes that uh, why this uh, drain voltage uh, waveform becomes more flat. So there are two aspects. One is uh, why mathematically how it can become flat. So for that, we have very uh, clear uh, answer, which we will see. But how exactly that happens in, uh, uh, in this circuit is not very well explained in most of the literature. Uh, so, it is only claimed that this transistor, which up till now we have been uh, treating as voltage controlled current source, uh, no longer behaves in this way. It has uh, ability to create certain voltage at the drain based upon the input voltage and the load network. But how exactly this MOS is able to create voltage uh, uh, especially the third order uh, volt uh, harmonics, which we will see soon, is not well explained, but we will not go into detail. We will uh, look at uh, this uh, drain voltage waveform purely from uh, mathematics point of view, and then try to see that uh, what should happen so that uh, we should get a flat uh, voltage at the extreme of the swing, which uh, definitely implies uh, low power consumption that means uh, possibly higher efficiency. So this, uh, whenever we get this kind of waveform, there are definitely other harmonics. So uh, in the simplest case, uh, what we will do is, uh, we will assume that the drain voltage, in, in addition to the DC voltage that we have here and the fundamental that we get typically for the class B operation, those uh, uh, components are there, but now somehow in, uh, you can say slightly mysterious way, a uh, third harmonic voltage also gets generated. So I was basically pointed out about this higher harmonics that is claimed to get generated when this uh, L3C3 is inserted between load and the MOS. Uh, by this MOS itself, but the exact mechanism is not well explained. So now, uh, once we say that we have this kind of uh, drain voltage, which has uh, three components, DC, fundamental, and third harmonic, then the question arises that uh, what will be the, in general, overall shape of the drain voltage, and uh, then uh, what will be the efficiency and uh, whether there is a possibility of increasing that efficiency or not. So we will see the uh, few possible cases of uh, this 
kind of voltage waveform where we have three harmonics and then uh, we will come back to analyze uh, this circuit for the case of the uh, drain efficiency and the power to the load and the uh, output power capability so here i have uh, plotted the waveforms so here you can see that this blue color is the fundamental the first harmonic that means this is basically V1, V1 cos uh, theta, and uh, this maroon color is V3. So here we see that uh, we have V3, and here we have V1, and when they get added, in general, we are going to get uh, this kind of waveform, which is the uh, drain waveform, total drain waveform. And we can see that uh, at the dip and at the uh, peak, there will be slight ripple in the uh, drain voltage waveform. And uh, we see that uh, this is theta is equal to zero. So at the center, we find that uh, the total drain waveform is uh, flat. That means the derivative is equal to zero, both at the lower location and at the upper location. So in addition to this point, there will be in general two more points where also the derivative is going to be zero. So this is the characteristic of the resultant waveform. But we get this kind of uh, drain voltage waveform when we see that V3 and V1, they are of opposite phase. So here we see that V3 is in uh, positive part and uh, V1 is in negative part. However, when V3 is also in the negative direction, like here, and this is so V1, then we see that the uh, net waveform can be greater than V1. So this is an important thing. Recall that for uh, all the linear classes, uh, this V1 was made equal to VDD for the maximum efficiency. But now here you can see that uh, this uh, VD, the drain voltage, can be greater than VDD or it can be less than VDD, which is the case uh, here. That means the uh, uh, sum of the or uh, uh, these two voltage waveform can be less than the amplitude of the V1, the fundamental, or it can be more than that of the fundamental. But here you can see that if we have this scenario, then in this case, uh, we can see that if we try to make uh, this swing equal to VDD, then here, this uh, resultant waveform is close to zero for a smaller duration compared with the fundamental. Fundamental is more flat compared with the resultant. So we do not want this kind of waveform because we want the resultant voltage to be more flat like this, so that the product of this with the drain current is zero for longer duration. So here you can see that uh, this is better, but uh, not uh, the best possible case. So if we choose the coefficients of uh, V1 and V3 in certain way, then it may turn out that uh, their sum, like here, so this is the total voltage waveform and uh, this blue color is fundamental and purple is third harmonic so in this case uh, they have been added in such a way with the opposite phase and of uh, such a amplitude relation which we will derive later on that it is flat you can see for longer duration so now the total voltage here is going to be close to zero for longer duration so this is going to be vdd line and uh, here we have zero line and this swing is equal to vdd so in this case so the power consumed by mos is going to be less and uh, we will have higher efficiency so and this scenario is called maximally flat maximally flat drain voltage. 
So we found that uh, for the previous uh, two possibilities that uh, derivative at uh, this value at theta is equal to zero and also at theta is equal to pi is always going to be zero, whether the resultant value is uh, greater than V1 or resultant is less than V1. But for the maximally flat case, even the second derivative is also equal to zero. So that equation will allow us to solve the relation between V1 and V3. So now we return to this case and uh, then try to find out uh, uh, what is this theta where uh, we will have uh, a drain voltage uh, equal to flat will be flat. That means uh, in uh, for that case, uh, derivative first derivative is going to be zero. So when we find this derivative, it becomes so uh, when we differentiate the equation one, V1, sorry, V1 sine theta minus three V3 sine three theta. So now we have to expand this uh, sine three theta. So this becomes three sine theta minus four sine cube theta is equal to zero. So this leads to sine theta into V1 minus three V3 three minus four sine square theta all is equal to zero. So from here, we find that there are two possibilities. There are two conditions under which uh, uh, VD is going to be flat. One is sine theta is equal to zero. So this implies theta is equal to zero or pi. So that is very obvious. That part we have already seen. So this is case one. In case B, we have This part, the second factor equal to zero. So, in this case, so when we solve for sine theta, we get plus minus square root of nine v three minus v one by twelve v three. And of course, here uh, this is going to be real only when v three is greater than v one by nine. So, whatever calculation we do, we should uh, see that V3 should be greater than V1 by 9. So, this implies there are two theta for which again the tangent is going to be 0. That means the waveform is going to be 0. So, this is not surprising. We have already seen it. Here. So, what we just calculated here corresponds to these two angles. And you can see that one of them is positive, other is negative. So now we uh, would like to know what will be efficiency in general. Up till now, we haven't uh, imposed condition that the resultant waveform should be flat, uh, more flat than the uh, typically encounter case. So let us find out the efficiency in general. Power to the load divided by DC power. And power to load is going to be V1 I1 by two. And uh, PDC is going to be VDD into IDC. So now we have to find out what is so uh, this I1 and IDC. So for that, we will have to look at the drain current. And uh, 
this drain current we are assuming to be of half a wave, similar to what we get in the class B. So the drain current is given by IP into one by pi plus one by two cos theta plus two by pi, all the even harmonics. So as I pointed out, uh, this need not be assumed of this form. This could have been assumed similar to class uh, C or class AB form. In that case, uh, the expression of ID is going to change. But we are uh, carrying out this analysis, assuming that it, it is of class B form. That means we arrive at that circuit by modifying the class B condition. So from here, we find that IDC is IP by pi and uh, I1, the fundamental is IP by two, where IP is the peak of this drain current. So therefore, we can uh, now find out the PL, load is V1, I1 by IP by two into two, so this is, uh, V1 by 4 IP and uh, DC power is IP by pi into VDD. Therefore, the efficiency in general for class uh, F3 is V1 IP by 4 IP VDD by pi. So this becomes pi by 4. V1 by VDD. Right. So this is the efficiency of class F3 in general for any uh, given input condition or you can say that for any uh, relation between V1 and V3. So we haven't restricted what should be V1 and V3. So here, of course, we would like to maximize this. So one would like to know what is the maximum value of this. So this clearly says that one has to find out the maximum value of this one. So here we have to now maximize. But recall that for uh, linear classes, uh, we used to take this V1 equal to VDD because in that case uh, at the drain there was only DC and the fundamental voltage. But here we have seen that we can have V1 and V3 of such form so that the uh, this V1 is greater than VDD yet the resultant the total voltage is of maximum equal to VDD. Right. So here in this case, so we cannot blindly take V1 is equal to VDD to maximize this factor. So V1 can be greater than VDD. So now there are two possibilities. So one is that uh, let us find out this for maximally flat case. And this is going to be the second possibility we will see that for uh, uh, maximum efficiency, the resultant waveform is uh, not going to be flat. But one can ask that what is the drain efficiency if we want the resultant waveform to be flat like this. So first we will find out the eta d for this case, maximally flat case. And then we will try to see that if uh, eta d can be further maximized, which in fact turns out to be the case. So when you maximize eta d, then we will see that the waveform is not going to be flat. There is going to be a slight ripple, 
but then efficiency is going to be maximum. So there are two cases for the efficiency that we want to uh, find out, maximally flat case and the maximum value of the uh, efficiency itself. So first, uh, eta d for the maximally flat case. Because for that case, uh, the resultant waveform is zero for longer duration. So for maximally flat case, so uh, even the second derivative of the drain voltage waveform is going to be zero at theta is equal to zero or pi. And the uh, first derivative was anyway zero. And uh, so this is one equation that we will be using for maximally flat case. And the second equation uh, that we will be using is that the total uh, drain voltage itself is uh, equal to zero at the, uh, theta is equal to zero or pi. So here, not only the second derivative is zero, but the waveform is also zero at theta is equal to zero and theta is equal to pi. So these are the two additional equation that we now get. And we will use these to find out uh, the relation between V1 and V3. So first, the second derivative equal to zero. So this implies V1 cos theta minus nine V3 cos three theta at theta is equal to zero or pi equal to zero. So this is V1 minus nine V3 is equal to zero. So this is that uh, the third harmonic should be equal to one ninth of the fundamental. So this is established relation between V1 and V3. But we yet to know the relation between uh, V1 and VDD and V3 and VDD. Especially V1 and VDD so that we can find out the efficiency by substituting that uh, value here. Okay, so to find out the uh, relation between uh, V1 and VDD, we need to take the help of uh, this equation, the second equation. So this VDD minus V1 cos theta plus V3 cos 3 theta, this is at theta is equal to zero, is equal to zero. So that is VDD minus V1 plus V3 is equal to zero. So using this equation, let us call it equation two. From two, what we get is VDD minus V1 plus V1 by 9 is equal to 0. So this leads to V1 is equal to 9 by 8 VDD. So here we can see that uh, to maximize or to increase the efficiency, uh, we can take uh, V1 more than VDD. So this implies V1 by VDD is equal to 9 by 8. So for maximally flat case, efficiency is pi by 4 into V1 by VD, which is 9 by 8, is equal to 9 by 8 times of pi by 4. And recall that pi by 4 is the efficiency for class B. And this overall value will turn out to be 88.4%. So for maximally flat case, we see that the efficiency is 88.4%, uh, which is uh, greater than 
that of the class B case, which was 28.6%. So this has happened because so we inserted the parallel LC uh, network in series with the load network and the MOS. So in terms of efficiency, the maximally flat F3 case uh, certainly offers a better uh, scenario. But uh, we would also like to see if the power delivered to the load is also more than that of the class B case. So we can now find out the power to the load. this power to the load is uh, one square by two RL. V1 we have already found out nine by eight VDD square by two RL. So this becomes nine by eight whole square VDD square by two RL. And now recall that the second factor is actually equal to the power to the load for class B case. So we see that uh, for class F3, for the maximally flat case, we not only get more efficiency, we in fact get more power to the load also. Now, we would also like to know that if uh, in this case, the output power capability is also better or not compared with the class B case. So we can now uh, do that calculation also. So this parameter, uh, as we have been define, defining, is equal to P load, power to the load, divided by the maximum swing of the drain voltage and the maximum swing of the drain current. So we need to find out maximum of this, maximum of this, and the power to the load. So let us first uh, find out the maximum voltage or drain voltage that MOS experiences. So we can go to the waveform and here we see that uh, this DC offset is equal to uh, VDD and of course uh, in the lower direction it swings to VDD and in the upper direction also it will swing to VDD. So the maximum voltage that the MOS will have to experience is equal to 2 VDD. So at this moment, MOS will experience the maximum voltage between drain and source. So this is uh, similar to what uh, we got for the class B also. So nothing surprising here. Now what about uh, ID max? So first uh, we will have to find out uh, ID, ID, and this is equal to the P, uh, maximum drain current that MOS will have to experience is equal to the amplitude of the drain current, which is uh, here, this much. Now the fundamental of this, is uh, responsible for this drain voltage. And uh, for the maximally flat case, we have to find out the fundamental voltage V1. And that V1 will then relate I1 of this drain current. 
and then using this I1, we will find out IP. So, so that uh, ultimately IP is also calculated in terms of this VDD. So this is uh, our uh, steps that we will follow. So this is equal to IP and uh, we have seen that the fundamental current uh, in this case is uh, IP by two. So that means uh, IP is I1 by two. So, so ID is sorry, uh, two I, I1. So this is going to be two I1. So the maximum drain current uh, is going to be equal to two I1, but we know that I1 is related with V1 by RL. And for maximally flat case, We have already calculated what is uh, V1, and this was 9 by 8 VDD. Right. So, in this case, when we want to have the maximum drain current for, for the maximally flat case, that will be equal to I1 maximum for the maximally flat case, and uh, that is equal to this value. So this two into one by RL nine by eight VDD. So now we know uh, both the denominator factors of uh, this equation three. We can now find out the load. In fact, we had already found out and uh, this was equal to here, 9 by 8 square to VDD square by 2 RL. This is basically V1 square by 2 RL. So therefore, we can find out what will be CP. So the output power capability is nine square VDD square by eight square to RL divided by this uh, 3A and 3B. So that is two VDD into uh, this factor, which is two into nine VDD into eight into RL. So if we simplify this thing, so what we get is nine by 8 into 8 and this if you calculate is going to be a factor which will be uh, greater than that of the class b case sir 64 oh yes sorry this is uh, 64 class b case this value is 0.125 even for class A also. So we see that this uh, class F3 is uh, better than class B in all respect, more efficiency, more power to the load and uh, better output power capability. So it was pointed out that uh, this efficiency can be calculated for various possible cases. We just now did the calculation for maximally flat case. But then one can ask uh, whether uh, this is the maximum value or 
something else is also possible. So now we will simply try to maximize this uh, efficiency. So now we are going to calculate the efficiency for the second case and with the sole objective of maximizing it. So we found that Eta D is equal to pi by 4 V1 by VDD. So when we want to maximize this, we have to find out maximum of this ratio V1 by VDD. And as was pointed out, in this case, V1 will be greater than VDD. So we don't know to what extent it can be greater than VDD. So when we want to know this maximum value, what we will have to do, we have to uh, express uh, this eta d uh, as ratio of v1 by v3 or v3 by v1. Because there is going to be certain ratio of this v3 by v1 for which uh, maximum value of eta will be possible. So now we have to uh, replace this v1 by vdd in form of v3 by v1 so we have to convert this function into this form and then find out the maximum value of uh, efficiency and find out what will be that ratio for which the maximum occurs so we have already seen that uh, uh, this uh, resultant waveform the drain waveform is going to be flat for uh, sine theta is equal to plus minus 9 v3 minus v1 by 12 v3 also in addition to theta is equal to 0 and pi. So we are now going to uh, take the help of uh, this one to replace v1 by vdd as function of v3 by v1. So the total Drain waveform is given by this expression. And this is going to be 0 at uh, theta given by this expression. So here now we are going to substitute this uh, theta from this equation so that uh, we can relate V1 by VDD in form of V3 by V1 ratio. So here, this cos can be written in form of uh, sine. And cos 3 can be expanded to ultimately convert into sine form. So since we know the sine theta, so sine from here cos square theta is equal to one minus sine square theta and cos theta is equal to square root of one minus sine square theta. So using these, we can get rid of the cos from the previous uh, equation. And uh, finally, write this as VDD is equal to V1 into V3 by V1 into one plus v1 by 3 v3 all raised power 3 by 2. So when we eliminate theta, this is what we will get. So now here we can see that uh, vdd is equal to v1. We will be calling this as a ratio r v3 by v1. So this finally gives us v1 by vdd is equal to 
1 by r into 1 plus 1 by 3r raised power 3 by 2. So this is efficiency uh, can be written in this form where r is v3 by v1. Right. So now we see that efficiency is function of this ratio. And then one can see that uh, what will be the maximum value of this. So for finding out the maximum value, we have to differentiate it with respect to R and set it equal to zero. So if we carry out this calculation, this will uh, give rise to R is equal to 1 by 6. That means V3 by V1 is equal to 1 by 6. So if we take uh, V1 by V3 is equal to 6, so that will imply eta D maximum value. And uh, for this value of uh, ratio or V1 by V3, V1 by VDD turns out to be 2 by square root 3. Therefore, the maximum value that we have been looking for is 4 by uh, pi by 4 into it was V1 by VDD maximum. So this is equal to 2 by square root 3. That means uh, pi by 2 square root 3. And this number is 90.67 percent. So from F3, the maximum efficiency one can uh, get is 90.67 percent. Uh, but unfortunately, in this case, the waveform at the bottom and also at the top, you can see is no longer going to be flat. There will be slight ripple here. And uh, here also, but here uh, nothing matters because uh, the drain current is zero in this portion. So whatever may be the voltage waveform in the second half, uh, the product is always going to be zero. So voltage waveform only in the first half is uh, important. Now one would like to know that uh, what is the load power, power to the load for this uh, maximum efficiency case. So PL, which is V1 square by 2RL, uh, if you do the calculation, will be 2 VDD by square root 3 whole square by 2 RL. And this will turn out to be equal to 0.2. And this factor is power that will be delivered to the load for class B case. So for this case also, we see that the power delivered to the load is going to be more than that of the class B case. For maximum flat case also, we had this uh, scenario. So we got all these advantages uh, by adding just one parallel LC in the output network here. So one would like to uh, see if uh, this advantage can be increased. That means the efficiency and power to the load can be increased if we add more such type of uh, parallel LC in the output network. So answer is yes, that can be done. So that leads to uh, what is called class 
f three five so in this case so uh, we have two parallel lc in the output network the usual l3 c3 and then we have what is called l5 and c5 So in this case, so uh, you can guess that the second parallel LC network is going to offer zero admittance at omega five equal to five times of the fundamental. So this is going to be equal to square one by square root of L five C five. And uh, this L3, C3, it will continue to behave in the way the previous circuit uh, had response. So what we now see here is that the input impedance looking towards the load is now going to be like this. It will be, of course, the approximately equal to RL at the fundamental and it is going to be infinity at three omega and five omega also. And it is going to be approximately zero for all other omega. So what will be the consequence of uh, this? That means impedance is now infinite even at five uh, omega is that a fifth harmonic will get added to the drain voltage. So this drain voltage will now have one more component. So total drain voltage is going to be the DC as usual and the fundamental and the third harmonic that we have already studied. And then there will be uh, fifth harmonic also. So as we add more and more odd voltage harmonics, so this we are doing mathematically. Again, the question will arise that how exactly the V5 comes into existence at the drain. So it, unfortunately, there is no clear answer available in the literature. So it is simply claimed that uh, this MOS starts behaving uh, like a voltage control voltage source also. And uh, once we offer uh, infinite impedance towards the load, that means uh, this uh, drain is isolated from the ground, then uh, V5, the fifth harmonic uh, comes into existence here. And the voltage waveform will be now more flat, giving rise to less uh, dissipation of power in the MOS during the first half of the uh, cycle. So for the first half, drain current uh, will be as usual, like this half waveform. But now the drain current, uh, sorry, drain voltage is going to be more flat, like this. So once again, the flattening in this second half is immaterial because current is equal to zero. But in this uh, first half, now the power uh, is going to get dissipated very less. And hence, uh, there will be uh, more efficiency. So for maximally flat case, uh, now there will be one additional equation. We can solve what will be the uh, relation between these coefficients, V1, V3, and V5. So 
So first equation is of course uh, V D is going to be zero at the zero theta is equal to zero. So this will always be valid. So that will give rise to one equation. This equation. And since it is maximally flat, so this drain voltage is going to have second derivative also equal to zero. So that will give rise to another equation. And finally, at theta is equal to zero and pi. So this will give rise to one more equation. So we have three unknowns and three equations, so we can solve and that will give rise to V1 as 75 by 64 VDD, V3 is 25 by 128 VDD, and V5 is 3 by 128 VDD. So we see that the amplitude keeps on decreasing as the harmonics order increases. And eta d we have already calculated in general is v1 by vdd. So this is valid for this case also. So now for uh, maximally flat case, this is going to be pi by 4 into 75 by 64. This will be 1.17 times of pi by 4. That means uh, 1.17 times of eta d of class b. So this is wrong class F35, and this will be 92.08%. So slight increment. Now, if you calculate the uh, load power, so fortunately there also, we will have uh, advantage. So for class F35, which is V1 squared by two RL, this will be 75 by 64 whole square VDD square by 2 RL. So this is 1.37 times that of the class B. The efficiency is also, uh, power delivered is also more in this case. But you can see that advantage or the gain is little but nevertheless it occurs so one can uh, keep on adding more and more and that will lead to more and more uh, efficiency and power to the load